Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is Dominique Baptiste, and I want to welcome you to Biblical Essentials tonight. We are continuing and actually concluding our study on growing in Christ in 2014, a life in prayer. You know, we've been blessed this year to, um, thus far this year anyway, to have an amazing author donate 20 books to us. 10 hardcover books, and 10 virtual books to pour into the lives of believers. Bless the Lord. And you guys showed up, and all the books were gone by Tuesday night. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I thought they were gone by Wednesday, but they were all gone by Tuesday night. So I do thank God for your participation in the ministry. It's good to know that um, you are involved, that you are connected, and that you want to Praise God, continue to grow in 2014, continue to grow as a Christian. Now, as Christians, we know, bless God, we must live our lives in the word of God. Amen. He is ever and in the presence of God because he is ever transforming our lives. Now, we found that Bible reading, memorization, meditation, study, and obedience to the word are all a form of the, fa or are all, um, all serve to form, anyway, the foundation of our Christian faith or our Christian belief. You know, prayer, however, <laughs> may be one of the most neglected elements of Christian growth. Now, you say, oh, every, everybody prays. Everybody tells God their problems. But sometimes, are we really praying? And are we praying according to the, the, the structure that's given to us in Scripture? The reason that I say that, not that it's the law, or that it's a commandment, or that if you don't pray this way, God doesn't hear you. But what it does is it gets you into a spiritual flow such that when you do pray, you hear God. Praise God. When we start off with praise and worship, praise the Lord, and we start off praising him and worshiping him, what? God's spirit, God inhabits the praises of his people. So now he's living in your praise. <laughs> Amen. And then we are able to bring forth our petition to the Lord and, you know, confess our sins because he is faithful and just to forgive us. Bring our petitions to the Lord. And then we knowing that he has heard us by faith. Amen. All we do is close in more praise and worship. Adoration of who he is, knowing that he has heard our prayer and that we can now move forward. And just a sense of expectancy, a sense of expectancy of knowing that God's heard me. And not only has he heard me, he's going to follow through on what his word has promised. Amen. Praise God. You know, worship is the third essential element to Christian growth. Worship involves honoring God and, engage, and engaging in private and public devotion. It also includes joyfully witnessing of the Lord to others. Bless God. Praise God. So as Christians, we must submit to the Lordship of God. And a part of that submission to his Lordship is thanksgiving. Is, uh, is, is, that, is that worship that honors him for who he is. Remember we discussed in Psalms 150 how it says that, you know, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Right? And his excellent greatness all talks about his worship. That's all worshiping him for who he is. Not just, not only for what he's done, because what he's done is a part of the praise, but who he is, is, bless God, the, um, who he is, bless God, is the worship. Bless the Lord. Praise God. You know, Bible teaching describes, the Bible describes, I would say, our Christian life as a Christian walk. And when we think about walking in the spirit and walking in Christ or walking our life out as a Christian, I want you to think about Galatians 5 and 16, for it says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, it tells us this. It says, walking gives us this picture of a step-by-step character building relationship with God when we think of it we're living in the spirit moment by moment in first in um, Isaiah yeah, 28 that's where we see bless the Lord um, God 
telling, he said, whom shall we give knowledge? And to whom shall we give to have understanding? Him that is drawn from the milk and weaned from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So as we talk about walking in the spirit, bless the Lord. Um, I think one of the main things that we should keep in mind, walking is that one that step by step, moment by moment, living our lives with God. Amen. Now, and when, when we live our lives that where we're walking in the spirit, what's next? As we walk in the spirit, we will begin to bring forth the fruit of the spirit. Amen. Amen. You know, right there, even in that same book of Galatians, it's 522 and 23. Because walking in the spirit involves several things. And it involves, it involves the key elements of prayer, which include confession of our sins and receiving forgiveness. Amen. Yielding to God and being controlled by the spirit, not like a puppet, but being guided as, as we follow his spirit. He leads, we follow. He leads, we follow. Yes, Lord. Amen. You know, cause the words of God are yay and amen. So we want to be a part of that yay and amen group. Bless be the name of the Lord. I'm just, I'm loving God and I thank him for his amazing grace in that area. Now we've talked about Four key elements so far, and tonight is the fifth, uh, that make up prayer. And we had a commitment, we had a challenge at the beginning of the week, right? What was our challenge? That you would spend the first half of your prayer time in nothing but praise and worship. Bless God. Praising him for his mighty acts and worshiping him for his excellent greatness. So, in the first half of your prayer, if you were praying for 30 minutes, then you were going to pray 15 minutes of praise and worship and then move on to your forgiveness and the petitions and then close in praise and in honoring God and in praise and honoring him. Right. So if you're praying 30 minutes, how many of you found that you seem to pray a little longer? Bless God. I know I did. I took the same challenge myself. And I have to say that. Praise in more, the praise in the beginning, the, especially since I tend to pray maybe a little longer than some, not as long as others, but um, that it just drew me into the presence of God. And it, that's where God began to speak to me. He said, now I abide in the praises of my people. Bless God. He said, tell them that as they praise and worship me, I abide in their presence so that my ear is attentive, attentive to their needs. My hand is stretched forward to fulfill their prayers. Bless God. Why? Because he's closer. Amen. Amen. It pays to praise. It pays to worship because that brings us closer into the presence of God. And it's that transforming nature of God that we're, that we're seeking. We're seeking to know the transforming God, the God who changes, hallelujah, our lives and transforms us into his very image and into his very glory, by his very glory. Amen. Amen. So we've talked about praise. We talked about the importance of confession. For if we confess our faults, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our faults and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He even tells us in his word to confess your faults one to another that you may be healed. Amen. Amen. And then petition. We saw Samuel's mother make her request made known unto God. And just as she made her request made known, it was confirmed to her through the priest. God said it is so. God said you can have it. Praise God. And the very thing that she prayed for, God gave her. He gave, she prayed for a male child. She said, God, give him to me and I'll give him back to you. And he did just that. Not only that, God rewarded her obedience and her faithfulness that after she gave up Samuel, then God blessed her with more children after that. Amen. Next was Thanksgiving. We talked about being thankful in all things, for this is the will of God concerning us and the power of a thankful heart. Indeed, God draws close to the humble and he resists the proud. And a part of the foundation of humility 
is having a thankful heart, knowing that we can't provide everything for ourselves, but we must trust the Lord to bring um, his good and perfect gifts into our lives. Amen. Amen. And finally, tonight, we're going to talk about commitment. So after we praise God, We've made our confessions. We put our petitions out before the Lord. We've shown our thankfulness to God. Bless God. And, we've been, and we are thankful for what he is doing and how he is moving and blessing. Then we have to show forth a commitment, bless the Lord, to what God is doing and how he is moving in our lives. Now, part of commitment is dedication. And dedication is basically the foundation of commitment. Without it, the believer is unable, we as believers are unable to offer God anything else. You know, when we think about what God wants to do in our lives, we don't want to be self-centered. We don't want to be self-involved so much so that we're telling God, look, God, do this for me. And that's just the way it is. And I don't want to discuss anything else that you're talking about other than what you're doing for me. You know, and oftentimes our prayers do sound like that. I'm sure they sound like that to God because I know that some of mine have. <laughs> and I'm sure that I'm not the only one. Amen. Amen. So we have to have a sense of commitment to God. When we pray, we say, God, you know, if you when you bless me, I'm going to follow through on this blessing. When you bless me, I'm going to make a, a make a vow to you and I'm going to keep my portion of the vow. I am committed to finishing my course. When we pray for salvation and we receive salvation for Jesus Christ, then we were, we were telling him, God, I'm in this to eternity. Praise the Lord. I'm in this to eternity. Bless God. I'm not in this for the right now. I'm in this for until, until you come. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Amen. You know, um, Paul explains d dedication I would say in Romans 12, 1 and 2. And dedication is a process, you know, and I just want to kind of, I pulled out some notes earlier this morning, and I, and I want to emphasize a little bit of what Paul had to say. I'm going to read the scripture, um, Romans 12, 1 and 2. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. When we talk about dedication and we look at dedication as our foundation for commitment in God, what do we see? We see that Paul here, he emphasizes three things. First, he says, commit our bodies unto the Lord, that we should become a living sacrifice unto him. That means impurity in the flesh and purity of heart, as well as committing our minds and our hands to the work that God has called us to do. Secondly, we are to avoid being conformed to this world, but are to strive to be transformed by the word of God. Well, how can we avoid being conformed to the world? Bless the Lord. Well, that means that we want to stay away from things that we know are not godly. You know, are they sin? It depends on what you're doing while you're there, right? But some things are just not of God. <laughs> they're, they're secular humanism. Praise God. You know, at times, truthfully, we get way too caught up in politics. If they're not God. All we can do is pray for our leaders. Bless the Lord. It's God who makes the difference. Bless God. And, and regardless as to what happens, we always operate and live on another plane. <laughs> when the world is going through financial hardship, God always seems to provide for his people. Now, it doesn't mean that we're not impacted by the hardship, but what it means is that we're surviving. We come through it with faith. We come through it knowing that God is able to take us through any situation. Praise the Lord. It's, not, it's like we're not as one without hope because we do have hope, and our hope may, is, our, is the manifestation of our faith. Praise God. So I want you to keep that in mind that a part of our dedication is dedicating the trans our minds to be transformed by the and renewed by the word of God. 
And finally, by doing this, we can discover God's perfect will for our lives. So when we talk about commitment, are you a committed Christian? Are you committed to this walk? Bless God. All I have to say is this, is that let this scripture be a bit of a litmus test for your level of commitment. And then up it. Increase it. Commit all the more. Dive in deeper. Say, God, I'm, I'm here, and now I want more, more of you. Bless the Lord. Paul says what? He says, I beseech you. I'm going to read this out of the Message Bible because you know it's good, right? <laughs> Amen. Very practical. So here's what I want you to do. God, God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before the Lord as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him. All right, embracing what God does for you is the best thing that you can do for him. Do not be so well adjusted to your culture that you fit it, that you fit into it without even thinking or the culture of this life. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the, am I, yeah, unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down into its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed, develops well-formed maturity in you. Praise the Lord. I love this one line here. He says, let me see. Don't be so well adjusted on your culture. Unlike the culture around you. Nope. Oh, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Um, Kim Cash Tate wrote a book called I Am More Christian Than I Am Black. And I know that that really bothers some people, the title. I know it was, it was a big controversy. But the truth is, we should be more dedicated to our Christian faith and our walk in the Lord than we should be to anything else. And that includes our, our race, our politics, our um, economic situation, praise God, you know, our class or classism, <laughs> Amen. Whatever it is, we should, our sorority and fraternities, bless the Lord, our jobs, our career and our, you know, our, our talents or our gifts. We should be more committed, more sold out, more surrendered to who God has created us to be than anyone or anything else. So when we talk about commitment, prayer, a life in prayer helps to build our commitment towards God. Thus, it builds our dedication towards him. After the dedication of our bodies, um, what are we to commit to next? I would say a commitment of our salvation to God. And if you take a look at 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12, it says, for, for, the which, for this cause, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which, is, which I have committed unto him against that day. And this is Paul telling Timothy, he's like, listen, I've been through some things. I've gone through some pains and some troubles. <laughs> he said, but I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher to the Gentiles. I know who I am in God. Have you gone through some stuff? but still you know who you are in God. Don't let your, ta your past tag you. Bless the Lord. You have to know who God has created you to be and walk that out. Because that, that's, that's what Paul is saying here. He says, for which cause I also suffer things. You know, so, so, some of the suffering we may have brought up on ourselves. But at the end of the day, we still have to know what we have committed to God and who we are in him. 
and don't let anything or anyone ever change that or challenge that in you. Second, we are to commit our works into the hands of God. Proverbs 16 and 3 says this, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Have you been looking for a great idea in God? Bless God. Have you been looking for that invention? Have you been looking for that next business move? Have you been looking for that next opportunity, that next, that next level of employment in God? The word of God here, he says, commit your works to the Lord. And that includes committing your work to the Lord. Commit your ministry to the Lord. It says, and thy thoughts shall be established. What he means by this is God will tell you what to do next. He will give you what you should do next. He'll tell you what to do next, and you'll be able to accomplish it. Praise God. He'll give you what to, what to desire, and then he'll give you that thing that he planted in your heart to desire. That's the God that we know and love. Amen. It says, then our goals in life are to be given Unto, then our goals in life are to be given unto God as well. Every desire and every goal that we have, we have to commit it to the Lord. I love Psalms 37 and 5. I just love Psalms 37. It says, commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Mm. That's, the, that's ministry. That's healing. That's family. That's salvation. That's business. Praise God. That's your finances, that's your, your property and the physical things that you want, the tangible things that you want out of this life. All of that goes, comes from the Lord. Praise God. And he gives it to each and every one of us. Next, we have to, it is difficult to, but vital that we commit our suffering experiences to God. What you say, what you say? <laughs> you know, are you serious? Yes, I am. I realize that we go through tri tri tests and trials in this life, but we have to be willing to commit those same suffering experiences and trials that we're going through in life to the hands of the Lord because it's only God that will keep us as we go through them. Remember when Jesus was talking to Peter and he told Peter what? He said, Peter. The devil desires to have you, that he may sift you like wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jesus was telling him that you're going to be all right. Don't worry about it. Amen. He was telling he says, he said, I have prayed for you. Luke 22 and um, 31 that your faith fails not, and when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. He said, I pray for you that your faith fails not. Your faith's not going to fail. And then when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. So during this time, how, 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 well, how was Peter challenged? Jesus didn't say that Satan wasn't going to come and tempt, wasn't going to come and sift him. He said, I pray for you that you'll make it through it. I prayed for you, so don't, don't worry about it. You'll be okay. You're about to go through a transition. You're about to go through some, some challenges. Bless God. He said, but I pray that your faith doesn't fail, that you don't stop believing in me, that you don't stop believing the words that I've taught you, that you don't leave, praise God, the body as, I've, as you become a part of the, the newly formed body of Christ. Amen. He says, that I pray that your faith doesn't fail. See, he didn't tell him that he wasn't going to go through the struggle, that he wasn't going to have the battle, that the enemy was not going to come. He did not tell him that. But what he told him was this. He says, I pray for you that your faith doesn't fail. Keep believing in God. Don't stop believing in God. Keep standing on his word. Don't stop standing on his word. Keep walking with him. Don't stop walking with God because you can walk through the fire and you can walk through the flood. And blessed be the God, you will come out and you will not even have the smell of smoke on you because that's how God is. It's like that's how God rolls, honey. <laughs> Amen. You have to believe and trust the voice of God that you hear and know. N you know, I had a tragedy happen in my life when I was 29 and 
the one thing that my father told me, he said, I realize this is a bit much. It's a lot. He said, this is a lot for anybody. He said, but I want you, I want you to trust God. I want you to just know that you will get understanding at the appointment, appointed time, but don't ever leave God. Amen? Because he's never going to leave you, but don't you ever leave him. And that's what Jesus was saying to Peter. He's like, he said, I pray that your faith fail not. Amen. Now, when they saw Peter go through this challenge, when they saw Peter go through this battle, when they saw him go through this warring, they saw him come through that, come through the battle. And then Jesus told him, he said, and when you are converted, like when you've overcome this and the people talking about you behind your back doesn't bother you anymore, praise God, and you've, you've been sued and you, you've survived bankruptcy, bless the Lord, and people wonder how you made it because you had to move out your big house and lost your car, and now you, you, know, you may have no car riding the bus or, or riding in a not-so-cute not so or luxurious car and living in an apartment. Bless God, you've been to prison and now you've gotten out. Bless God, are you in that marriage and, you know, you all happy to be married, you know, and now you don't have a spouse? And not only let your spouse act up in the worst kind of way, in public. <laughs> oh, my Jesus. And now you are on your own and alone? When you have come through that and you still have faith, you've been out on the world on drugs, bless God, and been homeless or whoring or whatever, and now you are still believing in God and you still have faith. That's what Jesus was telling Peter. He said, when you have come through your struggle, when you have been converted and none of this matters anymore. And it's not impacting you anymore. He said, now go strengthen the brethren. Amen. Amen. That's why when we hear per people's testimony and they come back to tell it because they've been converted, they now come to strengthen the brethren. They come to tell those that are going through, the, the husbands and wives that are going through bad men, you can make it through this. Oh, honey, just keep, you know, as my, um, my nana used to tell me, she's, she would say, she said, just keep living. Just keep living and don't let go of God. She'd always say, she said, hold God's hand. That's what she'd tell you, hold God's hand. So, you know, keep living. And hold God's hand. Don't ever let go. Because he's never going to let go of you. Amen. Jesus told Peter. He said Satan desires to have you. He wants to sift you like wheat. He said but I pray for you. You'll be alright. <laughs> You'll be alright. <laughs> Amen. This is your faith in advance. You'll be alright. Bless God. He said I pray that your faith doesn't fail you. And when you are converted. When you've come through this. Then go and strengthen the brethren. Tell them, oh, you'll be all right. You'll make it. <laughs> Bless God. Yeah, they'll talk about you. You'll be all right. They'll put your name in the paper. You'll be all right. They'll talk about you on, on the blogs. Bless the Lord. You'll be all right. Your, your friends that used to be your friends will be your friends on, at home, but won't be your friends at church or at work. You'll be all right. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Amen. Amen. So the thing that you once thought was important is no longer important anymore. You'll be all right. See, that's God. That's, that's what he was telling me. He said, he said, now go tell others. You can make it through. Jesus will give you power. Bless God. That's what he's telling him. So, and I love it here. It says, but I have prayed for you. Amen. Jesus has prayed for you. He's prayed for each and every one of us. John chapter 17. He's prayed that we would be strong. He's prayed that we would be converted. He's prayed that we would make it, you know, we would overcome temptation and trial. He's prayed that God would make us one with he and the Father, even as they were the one with him in the beginning. Bless God. If it was for Jesus to pray, it is for us to pray as well. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Next, it is important. For us to, um, right, we, we, we want to dedicate our suffering, commit our suffering experiences to God, definitely. Keep that in mind. Don't ever let go of that. Our Lord Jesus Christ did this very thing even when he was on earth. And if we take a look at 1 Peter 1, 23, 2 and 23, it says, 
Jesus, and speaking of Jesus, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. Praise God. When he suffered, he threatened not. But he committed himself to him that judges rightly. Even in this lesson about Peter, look, at, he's telling Peter, he said, I pray for you that your faith fails not. And when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. Jesus, even when he was tortured, you know, he was beaten and tortured. He said this, you know, when Peter was telling his testimony, he said even Jesus, when he was reviled, when he was beaten and tortured, he didn't turn around and beat and torture those same people back. Praise God, when he suffered, he did not turn around and threaten them. It's like, oh, I'm going to blow y'all up now. Because he always could have, but he didn't. He said, but he committed himself to him that would, would judge righteously. He just gave his life into the hands of the Father. And he said, now, Father, I'm with you. Amen. Not my will be done, but thine be done. Praise the Lord. And that's how we have to commit in our own lives, dedicate our own lives surrender in our own lives to the Lord God amen you know and finally I would say this in our hour of death we can also have the confidence bless the Lord we can have the confidence that committing our spirit in our hearts and our lives unto the Lord that God is going to be faithful and just and bring us into his holy presence for an eternity in Psalms 31 and 5 it says into thy hands do I commit my spirit that thou hast redeemed me O Lord God of truth bless God and then in Psalm in 1st Corinthians 15 and 58 it says this therefore my beloved brethren be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor blessed be the name of God is not in vain as Christians, when we talk about having a life of prayer or living that life of prayer, we must always open our prayer with praise and worship. Praise him for his mighty acts and his excellent greatness. We must confess our sins to God and, and receive his forgiveness. It's his good pleasure to forgive us, but he's not going to forgive what we don't ask him for. He's not going to see we exchange our wrong for his righteousness when we come and say, God, I did it. And he goes, OK, I cover it. <laughs> God, you know, David said he said, you know, cover blot out, blot out, my, cover my transgressions, cleanse my sins. And, you know, what I think it was cover my transgressions, cleanse my iniquity and wash away my sins. He covered all three. <laughs> Bless God, God, I went too far. I liked it. <laughs> and then I did it. We need to pray the same thing. We need to trust God that he wants to forgive us. And I know we, we're not taking that for granted, but we need it. We need it. And it's in humility that we come to God and we say, God, please forgive me. I was so wrong. Oh, my God, I was wrong, <laughs> you know. But the thing about God is he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And then next, he, after that, what he forgets it so much so he just wants to say, now, what you need? What can I do for you now? You're in right standing with me now. What do you need? And that's when we have an opportunity to pour our, pour out our hearts before God and give him our petition, making our requests made known unto him. Praise God. And he, will, he is faithful and just to forgive us, to give us those things that even that we ask for. Jesus said, whatsoever you ask in my name, it shall be done for you of the Father. That's awesome, isn't it? I think it's amazing. Um, next, we want to definitely have a life of thanksgiving. That after we've confessed our faults and he's forgiven us, after we have given him our petitions and by faith believing that we shall receive, bless God, then we want to be thankful unto him because he is worthy to be praised. You know, when we finish playing, it says, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bless God. And before we go, we want to make that commitment. We want to dedicate our hearts and our lives once again to God, knowing that I've prayed it. Now I'm going to commit my life to the Lord. I'm going to commit to live 
all that he has given me to live and to know. I'm going to walk in the spirit so that I don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Bless God. I'm going to present my body a living sacrifice, which is holy and acceptable unto the Lord. And that's my reasonable service. It's like that's the easiest thing I could do. Bless God. Then I'm going to not be conformed to this world, but I'm going to get in my word and be transformed by the renew and let his word renew my mind continually day by day, washing it in the waters of his word. Amen. So that I can be a living example and proof of what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So that I can be an example to my brethren. So that I can strengthen my brethren. Praise God. Even as Jesus told Peter. Well, listen, I want you to have a blessed weekend. Have a safe weekend. Pray. <laughs> Amen. Remember, and you know, pray for this. Pray and be thankful unto God. It says pray without ceasing and be thankful to God for all things. But this is the will of God concerning you. This is Dominique Baptiste. You can reach our ministry at biblicaletv.com. We look forward to hearing from you. We look forward to sharing with you and sharing the love of Jesus with you. God bless. Have a great evening. Take care.